If you're trying to find the derivative of a function using the definition we just gave, there's no hard and fast rule for going about it. You have to take each um, example as its own individual thing. In this video, I'm going to do two examples that might make this video run a little long, but I want to emphasize what I just said, that there is no one-size-fits-all technique. Example one, that's that f of x be x squared plus x. And our goal will be to find f prime of x. So the first step is always going to be the same. It's to just plug and play with this definition. F of x plus h is x plus h squared plus x plus h minus f of x. So minus this. O divided by H. And you um, cannot use continuity here. Everything in this fraction is continuous, but at zero, this quotient is not defined. So you can't just let H be zero. What should you do? Well, what I see is a square here, and that will give us, for example, an x squared, which would cancel with this negative x squared. So I think what I'm going to do is foil this out. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus x squared minus x all divided by h. And looking at the numerator, we have an x squared minus an x squared. We have an x minus an x. And now what? Well, this h in the denominator is a nuisance. It's kind of the problem here. If we didn't have this division, we could just use continuity. We could just let h equal zero. So what I see next is that we have an h, an h, and an h. We can pull an h out of the numerator. And what's the point of that? Oh, it's going to let us get rid of the h in the denominator. And now we can use continuity. 2x plus 0 plus 1. So the derivative is 2x plus 1. 
And going back to the previous video, where I tried to emphasize that the derivative of a function is a function, of course, 2x plus 1 is a function. But let's do another example. Example 2. Will that to g of x be the square root of x? And our goal will be to find g prime. But because there is no one size fit so method, finding g prime will be done in a completely different way from finding f prime. There is no quadratic here, so there is nothing that we can foil like we did up here. However, hopefully limits like this look familiar. We learned a trick for taking limits when you have square roots like this. And that trick is to multiply the fraction by one, but to do so, to write one in a very special way. If you don't remember this, you can review section 2.2. That's where we learned this trick. Now we do have something we can foil. We've got the limit as h approaches zero. This square root times this square root cancels the square root. We'll have minus this square root times this square root but we'll also have plus this square root times this square root. So those terms you see will just cancel each other out. And then we have this square root times this square root. The square roots cancel, but this time because of this negative sign, we have subtraction. And in the denominator, we just have this. Now what happens? Now the x and the negative x cancel. And we've just got an h up here. This h and this h cancel. And we're left with this limit. Now, everything in this limit is continuous. If plugging in h equals zero doesn't give us a division by zero error, we can take this limit that way. And plugging in h equals zero does not give us a division by zero error, it gives us this. So two derivatives, 
finding them, the process was completely different. If you look in the notes, you see a third example. And again, the tricks we use in that example are completely different. The good news is that once we get into chapter three, we'll learn easier ways of finding these derivatives, and we'll no longer have to go through these arduous limits processes. But for now, you should be able to work problems like this.